We have all read and heard dozens or even hundreds of times about how scientists and engineers are fighting to reduce the concentration of harmful substances in car exhaust gases. Gasoline engines today are without fail equipped with catalysts and diesel engines with filters. But how many of us have thought that ships are a much more significant factor in air pollution? Along the main shipping lanes, dense clouds of exhaust gases stretch for hundreds of kilometers. They can even be seen from satellites. How does it happen that the latest cruise ship or a modern container ship causes more harm than the entire fleet of an average country? Environmentalists are sounding the alarm. Large ships have already become one of the main sources of pollution today. Chris Lee Jones, CEO of the Littlehampton-based UK company Crystalon, which specializes in the supply of components for the shipbuilding industry, says, If you measure, for example, the emissions of cross-channel ferries, you will see that one such ferry emits as much sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere as half a million trucks. The largest sea container ships with engines over 100,000 horsepower are damaging the environment like 51 million cars. In 2021, about 300 million passenger cars in the United States emitted 7,000 tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which is comparable to the emissions, think about it, of just one 16-deck Harmony of the Seas cruise ship. What is the reason? Why such a huge difference? The reason is the fuel. As you know, gasoline for cars is made from oil, if you like, then this is a blank for the future fuel. In turn, oil can be decomposed into two main components. These are carbon, about 85%, and hydrogen, about 15%. They are interconnected by hundreds of bonds, which we then call hydrocarbons. In turn, they can also be divided into complex and light compounds. But all these compounds, in fact, are oil. Gasoline is extracted from it in two main ways. This is the direct distillation process and the more advanced one which has a lot of names. The most popular now are thermal and catalytic cracking. The physical process of distillation itself consists in heating the oil and evaporating the necessary compositions from it in turn. The process takes place at atmospheric pressure in a closed container in which a venting tube is installed. When oil is heated, volatile compounds begin to evaporate. Temperature from 35 to 200 degrees Celsius, we get gasoline. Temperature from 150 to 305 degrees Celsius, kerosene. From 150 to 360 degrees Celsius, diesel fuel. Then they are simply condensed into another container. This is a direct distillation process, but with this method, there are a lot of disadvantages. We get very little fuel. So only 150 milliliters of oil is obtained from one liter of fuel. The obtained gasoline has a very low octane number, namely the octane rating is about 50 to 60. In order to catch up to 92 to 95, you need a lot of additives. Therefore, many processing enterprises have now switched to a more profitable, perfect manufacturing method, cracking. The essence of cracking is simple. Oil is chemically and physically decomposed into its constituents. That is, large, complex hydrocarbon molecules are made into smaller and simpler ones that form gasoline. What does this give us? The output of gasoline increases to 40 to 50 percent. That is, compared to distillation, we already have almost half a liter of fuel. The octane number is much increased, usually it is about 70 to 80. Sure thing, you can't drive on such fuel, but you need a minimum of additives to get the finished product. As additives, blending components to increase the octane number, alcohols, ethers, alkyls, as well as additives for freezing resistance are used. Previously, tetraethyl lead was used to increase the octane number. It is an excellent fuel improver, but it causes severe environmental damage and can also cause cancer. So now, it has been abandoned. As you can see, gasoline manufacturers are very concerned about not harming humans and the environment. But the fuel for ships is obtained from the waste of this refined process. Such bunker fuel, marine fuel oil or diesel, is heavy and toxic, does not evaporate and contains 3,500 more times more sulfur than diesel, which is used in vehicles. Ships do not have emission control technology such as particle filters that are common in cars and trucks. 
Ship fuel is poisonous to fish and crustaceans and not good for seabirds or people living near ports. According to the Transport Environment Organization, the deaths of 50,000 people in Europe a year are directly related to emissions from international shipping, costing society 58 billion euros. Scientists consider sulfur dioxide to be the main culprit. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, is a colorless toxic gas with an unpleasant odor. It is released during the combustion of fossil fuels. Diesel vehicles are the main source of sulfur dioxide. Like nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide can create secondary pollutants when released into the air, sulfate aerosols, particulate matter, and acid rain. This massive emission source cannot be ignored. The dependence of shipping on fossil fuels is having a catastrophic effect on the planet, especially our oceans. Rising temperatures and acidity, melting sea ice and declining oxygen levels are destroying coral reefs, threatening marine life and undermining the ocean's ability to function as a key ecosystem and climate regulator. Given that every second breath we take comes from the ocean, our health is directly related to the health of this unnatural system. Back in 2018, almost all countries supported the adoption of a meaningful roadmap to have the emissions of the global shipping industry by 2050. But the key question of how to ensure that goal is met remains unanswered. It would seem that if one of the main causes of high pollution is sulfur, which is found in large quantities in cheap and untreated fuel, then the problem can be solved simply. We need to switch to cleaner fuel. Experts also see a panacea in moving away from high sulfur fuel oil and switching to a higher quality diesel fuel containing less sulfur. But not everything is so simple. Chris Lee Jones, CEO of Crystalon, while he sees, for instance, the transition as a step in the right direction, emphasizes that it will not be the final solution to the problem. After all, if all ships switch to diesel fuel, then the demand for it will increase and oil refineries have limited production capacity, so prices will go up. And under these conditions, it will become more profitable to return to fuel oil. But having already equipped ships with scrubbers, that is, exhaust gas cleaning systems. Of course, this will require significant additional costs. The price of one set of such equipment can reach $2 to $3 million, but they can quickly pay off. Scrubbers are based on the same principle that is used in the filters of many factories and power plants located on the coast. In these filters, gases are purified using seawater. The principle of operation of the filter is to pass the exhaust gases of the marine engine through the outboard seawater. Seawater contains calcium salts, which practically neutralize sulfur dioxide. At the same time, sulfur binds, forming calcium sulfate, in other words, gypsum. Used, so-called flushing water is back released into the ocean. The engineers decided that seawater initially contains calcium sulfate and marine engine exhaust filtration cannot significantly affect its natural concentration. As a result, the system removes almost all sulfur dioxide and approximately 80% of particulate matter from the exhaust gases. The race to install scrubbers has just begun. In January 2020, the organ of the United Nations that oversees shipping announced a new global sulfur limit of 0.5% instead of 3.5%. To achieve this goal, they called on the world's navy to switch to low sulfur fuels. Scrubbers have proven to be the cheapest way to do this. But the devil is in the details. And such a detail in the case of scrubbers was the need to dump no less than 10 gigatons of wash water which turned out to be by no means perfect. The impact on the marine environment of increasing volumes of waste from scrubbers was not properly considered before they were allowed to be used. The vast majority of scrubbers are open systems that effectively transform air pollution into water pollution by continuously discharging warm acidic wash water containing carcinogens, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and heavy metals. When released into the ocean, these substances pose a threat to aquatic life. It was a loophole for the industry to keep burning the cheapest and dirtiest fuel. We could solve the problem of pollution with sulfur by switching to cleaner fuels. But instead, we just move the problem from one place to another, says Lucy Gilliam from the Seas and Risk, an association of European environmental organizations. 
Unfortunately, all this time, sea freight has served the oil companies as a way to dispose of more dirty raw materials that are intensively poisoning the planet. And the solution to how to save the environment from ship's killers has not yet been found.